Hi and welcome in this video. So I hope you hear me well. Now, if you are friends with Elitom and Amin, you know that he himself is live on Facebook right now. And I'm gonna be live too because the reason he is live and the reason I am live at the same time is that we made this challenge that um, he's gonna be live and I'm gonna be live on Facebook at this exact moment. Now, why do we come up with this challenge? The reason is we were supposed to do this interview with John and, um, oh great, okay. We were supposed to do this interview with John and for some reason, technically speaking, the equipment wasn't working on John's side. So we decided we would postpone the interview and uh, Ellie Tom suggested we should do an interview together. And because we didn't have the Facebook app to do it together, I suggested how about you do it on your side and I do it on my side. So here is, you know, here is what is happening. Um, let's do it. So today the topic will be how to achieve anything better and faster with one single practice, which is meditation. I'm going to share about that. Why? Because that is today my life experience. That is my full-time job. And I'm going to explain how it's possible and why. And that is something that is, I believe, can be really worth adding onto your New Year's resolution list and um, maybe in your life if you want, no matter where you come from, no matter your background and no matter your religion either. You can be from any religion, any culture, any gender, any age, meditation can be available to you for free anytime, anywhere. Now, for you to understand why I talk about meditation and why, how it has helped me so far, how it has made me uh, financially free, more advanced on the path of food freedom, emotionally free, and um, free also affectively. I used to be super, super affectively dependent. And uh, today I can just live a life of what I would call heaven anywhere in the world. Um, and I spend my time, 90% of my time is just meditation. The 10% being working on my computer, you know, and doing other things that are part of my meditation routine, like hiking, a workout, I work out three hours every day, um, activities like art, you know, sun yoga, yoga, anything that I truly, truly love. And I don't need to work and, and be with people. I don't need to do any of those things because I simply follow what my meditation is leading me to to in terms of action i simply follow the sound that i hear through my meditation practice and i go into action simply following meditation now i'll go deeper into details straight after me sharing with you some insights of my story okay so basically I was born in an island in the Indian Ocean called Reunion Island. So if you see the map, okay, the global map, I'm going to do it this way. So there's South Africa, Madag Madagascar, <laughs> let's do it this way, Madagascar. And next to Madagascar, there's three little islands, and one of them is Reunion Island. Now, I was born there, my sister was born there, my mom was born there, and my dad was born in India and flew to Reunion Island where he lived and he married my mom when she was 16. And two years after I was born and a year and a half after my sister was born, that's the story of the beginning. And uh, one thing that wasn't planned is that my dad, when I was three, my dad was diagnosed with mental health issues and he had to leave the country to get um, into examinations, like health examinations, for his brain and he was supposed to come back but he never did so my mom was there so my mom was like uh, 19 she uh, no sorry 20 she um, had she was waiting and she at some point she realized you know dad isn't coming back so she decided to leave the country to get a job and my mom had no diplomas no work experience. She hated, the, literally hated the idea of working, never had that plan in her life. And her dream life was to be, a, you know, to be a housewife and just care for her children, which she was doing very well. 
But so that was the first challenge in, the, in our life as a family unit. And from then on, she, we flew as you know, all three, my mom and my sister and I, to France, which if you kind of can visualize, Reunion Island is there. France is like way at the top in Europe. And we flew there because my mom had this job proposition. We flew, we got the tickets because they were gifted to us. My mom didn't have money to pay for them. And we arrived in France, in Paris, in this new big country. And soon, very, very soon, my mom realized that the job proposition is a fake. It's not a job. Amazing inspiration. I'm just starting. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yes, so we arrived in Paris. And uh, my mom soon realized that the job proposition is actually some kind of unhealthy proposition coming from, I would say, a, a man who had uh, not very wise ideas. And so she said, no way. And she, we leave Paris and we end up in the country, but we, my, we end up being literally like almost homeless, have no place to stay. And the reason we were not in the street, like literally, is that we, there was this center for homeless people and this center welcomed us, okay? And legally you are allowed to stay two weeks in this center, but for some miracle reasons, we stayed two years. Two years in this homeless center. So that's how it started. <laughs> so me being a child, now why do I share this story? I want you to understand that the the the, pro, the life that you have as a child programs your reality programs your life even even though you may not be conscious of it i wasn't conscious of that i didn't even know um the only thing i was kind of conscious of is that when i arrived in paris i couldn't go through the escalator i was just falling down and my mom was so busy with my sister and all the luggages we had i felt like so like rejected and scared and and really really unhappy arriving in this new country now this is leading me to another part of the story let's go back to us coming out of this homeless center place so um yeah after that we were really really blessed through i guess you know the life experiences and the universe to be able to live in a house, I don't know how, I don't know how it was even possible because we lived in a house with a big garden with many magical animals. I do explain more in detail the magic of those animals in the story section of my website, so I won't go into details in that part. But we were living in nature and with animals and even though the garden was looking like a jungle, it didn't matter because we had so much freedom doing artistic activities. I was playing the violin, I was doing ballet. My sister was playing the cello and doing ballet. We were doing a lot of art, we were sewing. My mom was a, a talented dressmaker. And so we were doing all those things surrounded by animals, many, many, and surrounded by nature. And we could grow vegetables and all those things coming from the miracles of life. Cause really we were living with less than a euro a day like a three okay so we i grew up and we grew up mostly with financial uh, social help my mom didn't have time to work and she wanted to care for us and um, when i first oh sorry when i first saw my mom going to work well first she was starting to work as an entrepreneur as she was talented in dressmaking she started to sew dresses trousers clothes for people and the big issues that she faced that was that she didn't know how to value herself. She, she wasn't valuing herself, she wasn't valuing her work, and thus she either couldn't get paid or she was getting very little paid because she, people were always negotiating. People were always saying, oh, I don't want to pay that price. And, and the result was she was unhappy. She was spending a lot of time trying to make money and that wasn't working. That's the first issue that she faced and that I faced myself 10 years later when I started my own business, okay? Now second, when my mom was working in a company as an employee, she was facing other issues. She wasn't happy, she didn't have time for us and she didn't have time for herself. 
And she was very, you know, she just wasn't happy and we barely had enough money to pay for the, for the bills, sorry, to pay for the bills. So that's another programming that I got. I got the idea that basically in life, it's hard to survive. It's hard to generate money. It's hard to live in abundance. It's hard to live happy. And if you do generate money, you don't have time for yourself, don't have time for your friends and family. You basically are stuck and, and you live a life that is, you know, you feel pissed off basically all the time. So that's the programming that I got. Again, I didn't know anything of that back then. I learned all of that shit and programming 10 years later when I started myself to go and work for an employee and then after that to work by myself as an entrepreneur because I had no choice. I was getting so sick working as an employee that I had to quit my job. I, I'm coming to that a little bit later. So this was the programming. The third programming I want to share with you is affective dependency. Now, how do we get that? I think most women who grow without a dad actually get this programming of affective dependency because we don't know how it's like to, to, to talk really to other people, especially the other gender. So I saw my mom when I was a child not being able to say no, both to men and women, but mostly to men. And uh, basically, you know, welcoming anyone in our house, but like kicking people out was really hard. People like were kind of, they were staying hours <laughs> in our house and that was okay because never, no, nothing really happened like, I mean, sexually or anything, but it was an issue. And I learned my, myself later on that to be friend with people, to have relationship with people, to be, you know, happy with other people, you need to please people. That is so, 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 so wrong. That is absolutely not the case and how it works. And for me, learning, learning to say no was a major issue on my path. So those three issues, okay, those three challenges, even though I wasn't aware of them, building my programming, building my DNA, did crystallize themselves in my, you know, in myself, inside of me, in my thinking process, in the way I was seeing life. And that's how it works, I believe, when we are children. Everything gets programmed without us being even conscious of it. Now, you can check for yourself, but that was for me the way. So I'm going to jump to 10 years later, okay? So 10 years later, here I am uh, working. So I'm quitting the family unit at age 18, running away from the family unit. I was so eager to work on my freedom. I was so, I wanted to be that free bird experiencing life by myself. And so here I am in Paris City, a place that I had never been before. And I was there working um, as an employee, as an assistant in a company dealing with sustainable development. Now I did, I wasn't meditating then, I was starting meditation after. But working in this company, one year after that, I learned about food freedom and I do a transition, for those who don't know, I do a transition into what is called pranic living or basically a transition to learn to free myself from the need of eating food. That's something people can relate to maybe if you can't, that's okay if you don't know about that. I'm just sharing my personal path. So I did that. In that same year, I learned about meditation, which my mom was actually practicing herself um, a few years before me. So I picked up the same meditation practice. I didn't know about it. But soon enough, I felt that this was a major change. This was key. So during that year, me learning about food freedom and meditation led me when I came back to my job because I had like one week of retreat to learn about that. Coming back to the work, I was like unable to sustain my new state, okay? Being food free, I was unable to sustain that while working as an employee in this company full time. Now, during that year, like literally two weeks before learning about food freedom and being myself food free, I had bought a place in Paris. I had bought some kind of attic. I'm gonna share about that a bit later. 
And I was, I committed myself to pay for like 15 years of my life every month, a, what we call a mortgage, I believe in English. So I was committed to that. Now, after the chronic transition, I'm there in my office feeling sick because I can't sustain my state with working full-time in, in a job as an employee. So basically, at the end of the day, I go back to my place to go back home. I eat because I feel so frustrated and so horrible in that place and so unhappy, but I don't know why. I just know, I knew after that I needed more nature. And in Paris City, well, there was not so much, especially when you work extra full-time, over 40 hours a week. So I was basically eating in the evening throwing up in the morning because that was too much for me and i remember if that was coming to a point that it was so much that one day my boss asked me mariam are you pregnant but you know just to show you how bad it was and at some point i remember this day i was so i was so sick i was in the toilet you know secluding myself there and just just sick 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 to the point that i just couldn't stay and so I, I left calling a taxi, keep vomiting, and for 24 hours after, I was in a miserable state, laying down, and that was it. So that was the end of me working as an employee. No more. <laughs> and so after that, because I have this mortgage to pay, I have like loan, loans, yeah, with an S, I think I had two loans. So um, I'm like asking myself, okay, Marin, what do you do? And so I thought my only way was to generate income by myself, working as an entrepreneur, as we call it, finding a way to do what I was loving with my own creativity and, and making an income out of it. Now, if you remember the issues my mom was facing 10 years before, I faced the same. So <laughs> I started to work for free, basically, like, like working for free. No other ways to say that. And when I started to realize that that wasn't working, I started to ask for money, but such a little tiny bit that I couldn't get anything out of it. I couldn't pay for my expenses. I absolutely couldn't pay for my mortgage. And so I was stuck, I was in trouble. So that's to show you how much we get programmed through our past experiences, through what we lived as a child, even though, again, we were conscious of it or not, and how this is following you your entire life unless you do something to change it. And for me, the way I was able to change it, and I believe this is a probably, I don't, for me, that was the only way. I tried many things, it didn't work, but this way worked. Meditation did work. I'm gonna share with you how it worked. So now when I was facing those issues, being an entrepreneur again, I was telling myself, that's because of you. You're not good enough. Always I was telling myself this. I was finding the excuse that, Mariam, you were not good enough. Like, not to say I was not. So if uh, I was doing an event, I was basically doing events for pranic slash Brazilian people or vegan events. So link with, you know, what I like. And um, yeah, and those events were basically the money that was raised was paying all the fees of the event but there was none or very little for me. So when this happened, I was like, okay, Marianne, that's because you didn't, you forget about this. That's because you, you didn't do good enough there. That's because you didn't work, oh, a major one was, that's because you didn't work enough. Oh my goodness. That one threw me into a competition with myself to overwork, overwork, overwork. So I was basically working day and night unless when I was sleeping, because I needed the sleep because I was so overworking, so I was so tired. But apart from sleeping, I was working. I cut all my relationships with friends, family, for three years, all right? No friends, no family, no, no social interaction for three years, just because I had this idea that if I was working day and night as much as I could, no matter what my, my health was, my health situation, no matter anything, I would succeed. I would become this independent woman doing everything by herself. That's the idea that I had. So I'm there working day and night. And the more I do that, the less it works. 
I get into thinking because I was always telling myself something that was wrong with me. So I thought, oh, I need to do this investment in marketing that's going to work. Wasn't working. Oh, I need to do I need to do it better. This marketing page better. It wasn't working. Every time, you know, I was always telling something to myself that wasn't working. Basically, that I wasn't good enough. And at some point, I remember the day. I'm going to share with you that part of the story, which is the pit, you know, of that, you know, story of Marianne. I was laying down. In this 5.72 meter square attic I was living in, horrible, but I had no other place to afford. So that's where I was living in Paris. I was lucky to live in Paris, we could say, but I was laying down there because I had no, you know, I couldn't even stand up. I was laying down there. The attic was molded because uh, that was, a, I guess, a life experience to just show me how I wasn't taking care of my own place and myself too. And so I was laying there and I, I was looking at the window and through the window there was a bright, shiny sun. And, and I was looking at that, I was like, wait, there's a sun shining and I, and I couldn't even stand up to go out. It wasn't possible. I was such in a state of burnt out you know, depressed and, and feel, feeling so miserable. I couldn't even just stand up to, to, to walk and go out. It wasn't even possible more. And this reminded me three years before, you know, three years earlier, when I was working as an employee in this company, the same thing happened, meaning that I was sitting in front of my computer, just like now, I mean, I'm standing up really, but, and I looked at the window at that time. I remember it was on the left. And I saw the, the sun shining and I was telling myself at that time back then, Marianne, the sun is out, you can't go out because you're stuck in that office working as an employee for this company full time and you can't even go out to see the sun. Now, Marianne, you're quitting your job so that you can be able to see the sun anytime you want, anywhere you want. That was my first major goal, to be able to see the sun and be out. I know it sounds like silly or like a child dream, but that was my dream. And so my idea of, of, of quitting work was to be able to do, to go out, at least go out and see the sun anytime I wanted. And now back to the place I was. So I, I am there laying down and able to see the sun. And I'm like, that is so horrible. That was so, I felt so, so miserable, so in pain, not being able to even just go out and see the sun. I was like, Mariam, there's something wrong. You can't, this, this can't be possible. You have to find a way. And I was, you know, through my head was going all the troubles that I was facing. I was in debt. Honestly, I know the figure is going to be big, but my amount of debts totally was over 90. So nine and, and zero, nine $90,000 of debts I had, included the loans that I had for professional reason, personal loans and mortgage and, and everything I was owing. I also had, oh my God, I also had a fine to pay, can you believe that? Because the government had decided I was living in a place that was so unhealthy that they made me pay a fine to live in the place I was living. That is so crazy. So that's, that was the situation. I was mentally, physically to, like sick and I was feeling just horrible. So from that place and that situation, where I was just crying all the tears of my heart. I, a voice, you know, a calling, a voice was calling. Something was telling me at some moment in this, in this despair, a voice was telling me, okay, Maria, you know what you don't have, but can you see what you actually have? So hearing that, I'm like scanning my five minute square attic. So that was fast, but still scanning. And at some point, my eyes stick to that, see that little box that I have, where in this little box, there are tools that I use for my meditation practice. Now, I wasn't doing my meditation no more, because remember, I had a work day, work night, sleep, that was it. I wasn't even, believe me or not, I wasn't even caring for myself to the point that I was keeping the same clothes for days, day and night, without changing them, without getting a shower, none of that. Like to the point I was so focused on work that nothing else matters, including my own body. 
horrible, but that's, that's what it was. Anyway, so my eyes stopped to that box and I remember, Mariam, you have the meditation. So even though I was super broke, depressed, unhealthy, I remembered that, okay, if you have the meditation, you have time now. <laughs> you can just do it, you know? You have nothing to lose more than, I mean, hopefully, than what you already are at, the state you are at. So I made it, I, something happened that I found the energy to sit up. I was sitting down. From laying down position, I managed to sit down. And that was the first victory. At the point I was it, at the point I was, that was the first victory. So I pick up my box, take my tools, and start my meditation practice. Now that first meditation practice was heaven. After that session, oh my god, after that session, the phone rings. Now remember, I had no friends and, and no family contact, so nobody could ring me. <laughs> the only people who could ring me was administration. So I pick up the, the phone. I feel in a state of, of deep peace. Honestly, I feel so peaceful that I felt like nothing could be uh, um, bad or influencing me at that very specific moment. So I pick up the phone and I answer the phone and this is a bank. And so the bank is asking me, um, do you, so how about your financial situation? How are you gonna pay this and this and that? So they're like listing the debts that I have that I know I have. And, um, and so the, yeah, the, it was a woman, she's saying, how are you gonna pay and when are you gonna pay? And very peacefully, like never like that before, I answer very honestly, I don't know. I don't know, but I, I know that someday I'm going to be able to pay. Now the woman answers, imagine that, the woman answers, okay, fine, we'll be waiting. So, so basically she was saying they would just wait. And honestly, they waited months for me to be able to pay without charging me any fees, any interest, without sending me letters, without send me, sending me any people to knock on my door, anything. They just literally waited for me to pay with no charges and, and no fees, nothing. That was the most amazing first miracle that happened. Now, second, I received an email from someone that I never talked to for years. And that person is now no longer living in France where I was living, but is living in the UK. And that person is telling me, hi, Mariam, how are you? Uh, how about you come to my place? I invite you. You will have nothing to pay, nothing to care about. Just come. That would be fun. And I'm like, oh my God, but that's so, that was so amazing. Because re remember, I had no friend and no connections. And that person is sending me an invitation at a time of my life. I, I, I feel so, you know, I so need it. <laughs> and so I, I'm very happy, but I don't have money to pay for the ticket. And it was another country. So the third miracle that happened exactly at the same moment in the same, you know, the time was that my mom somehow makes contact with me. I didn't have contact with her for years, and now we come back in contact, and she's telling me, oh, she's sending me money to actually, which is actually paying for the ticket. So all this happens just right after my meditation session. That, for me, that was, that was so, like, that was my breakthrough. That was my breakthrough because me moving from the place I was in that was very unhealthy for me and going to another country in a totally new environment made me literally, that was heaven. I was able to overnight, really, because I didn't have to think mentally about paying this and that, overnight, I went from eating two cooked meals a day, vegan cooked meals, to having juice, one glass of juice and a salad a day, overnight. I went from doing no workout to doing workout every single day. I started with five minutes and I added minutes onto that workout. So from five minutes, I went to 10 minutes every single morning, 10 minutes I went to 20 every single morning, and so on to the point that workout was becoming my lifestyle. So I just need to blow my nose. <laughs> Cause like when I get so excited, my nose sometimes starts running. You know. Anyway, so that's what was happening. And um, 
yeah and the other most amazing thing that so from that day i started my meditation back i committed myself to meditate at least 10 percent of my day meaning two to three hours every single day because i knew the benefits of it i knew the result i had seen the results dramatically changing my life like you know even unimaginable so I was meditating every single day, two to three hours. And because I was doing that and simply following, so instead of acting silly, I would say, you know, acting like boom, 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 boom. I was following my meditation and through my meditation, I was getting exactly what I needed to do, the action plan I was needed to do. I was, uh, yeah, I was supposed to do to get results. I didn't expect any results. I didn't expect anything. I was just literally following him with humility and no expectation, selfless and unconditional. That, that really is the state I was in when I was in my meditation and I was, when I was acting after that. So uh, through that meditation, day after day, within only a few weeks, I believe three from memory, Within three weeks, I was able to generate to generate thousands and pay off very quick a large amount of my debts. That that was also amazing because I had been working for like three years, day and night, you know, on, and I was you know working maybe an hour a day, right? And I was working with no internet connection, no phone and no computer. I was basically, I got gifted a computer, a very old computer from my sister. I was gifted a very old phone as well from a, another person. I don't remember, yeah, from another person who gifted this phone to me. And I was going to the library of the town I was in, which had free internet connection. I didn't even know. I popped in the library one day and they said, how about we give you a card and you can use internet for free. That's how I created my business in digital marketing can you imagine that digital marketing like online marketing having one hour of internet connection per day that that's amazing I, if i could do that anyone can do marketing online with nothing literally with nothing so um so yeah within a few weeks i was able to pay off my debts very fast i when i saw the results i went back into paris and sold my flat that took me some time. I did try to sell it before. I mean, if I can call it a flat, you know, the attic. It, it did take me, it take, took me four years to be able to sell it. That's how powerful my programmings and my fears were around money, around being able to sell, being able to live away from a place that I felt like was my cocoon, because that really was the reason why I bought this. I bought this because I had not enough money to get anything else. And because I was so scared to live with other people or to do, you know, to just move out from a place uh, where that wasn't working. So that's the, whole, the overall story of me, you know, <laughs> working to get rid of or to erase in a general way with understanding, with love and compassion, the programming I grew up with. Now, I'm not saying anyone is responsible. No one is responsible for the programming I grew up with. My mom did a great job. My family did a great job. Everyone did. It's just that I had to go through that to learn how to free myself uh, in terms of food, in terms of financial, in terms of also affective dependencies. That's another path. I didn't really go into that, but maybe in the next video because I feel like it's taking a long time. But that's how I freed myself from any big patterns and programming and self-sabotaging patterns that I had around valuing myself, respecting myself, loving and caring for myself and thus for other people. Because when you are able to care for yourself first and foremost, you can actually care for other people. And yeah, that, that was a journey. It took me it took me two years to go from 90, over $90,000 of debt to financial independence, meaning being able to generate energy in the form of money through my own creativity. Now, this doesn't mean I don't have people to I work with or people who did help me. I do. And I believe being an entrepreneur is not doing everything by yourself. It's just 
being able to serve humanity in quality and quantity with the help and, and collaboration of other people as well. That was a big lesson for me. From the super independent woman alone to collaboration and compassion, peace and uh, tolerance and humility, I guess. So yeah, that's why I do share why meditation can allow you to get anything. Meditation can set you free in any areas of life that you would like to be freer, maybe. Maybe if you, yeah, no matter what your life is about, whether it is in workout, whether it is in business, whether, whether it is in your relationships, whether it is with your health, whether it is with uh, art and any activities that you do and that you passionately love, you can free yourself or you can really achieve anything better and faster with meditation. Now I'm going to share with you why, because I said that before, how it happens for me and how do I work with my meditation practice so that I get, I get those results. Because today I work less than one hour a day. And when I say work, it means that actually using the computer to, for example, edit a video, send an email, share my life on social medias that that's what i call work right it's not i have no client all my clients i've never seen them like never seen them physically i literally work only online from anywhere in the world and i i don't have scheduled commitments i i just do my courses because that's what i do or my programs in partnership with other people anytime i want to and then i upload and then i you know whatever I, I can't go into details right now, but that's basically what I do. I work online, but I work in a way that I stay free, I remain free, and I do only what I love. And I believe anyone can do that. Because from the place I started, started with all the programming that I had, if I am able today to spend all of my day out hiking, working out, going to the beach, looking at the sun, um, just enjoying myself, and work less than one hour every single day, anyone can do that. Anyone can do that. And today, oh yeah, just to conclude the story, today I live by the sea, and anytime the sun is out, I'm out. <laughs> anytime the sun is out, I'm out, because that is my victory, I would say. That is my victory, considering the fact that my first vision was to be out when the sun is out. So I am out today when the sun is out. It took me four years to get to that point from the, the day I, I decided that, but I managed to do it. And I believe the four years went really fast, even though it was at some point miserable and horrible to go through. But if I can do it, anyone can do it. And that's what I want to share with you. Now, if you want to do that, and if you want to allow yourself to, I'm sorry, I know the messages are going through, but I, I can't read and, and speak at the same time. It's like, it's too much for me right now. <laughs> so for you, some keys I could give you or techniques for maybe meditation, whether you are new, a beginner in meditation, or whether you are already meditating, no matter again, your culture, your gender, your age, your background, your religion, it doesn't matter any of that. You can just pick up any meditation of your choice and start with that, or keep doing your own meditation practice. I have a specific practice which I call the inner loud, I mean, which is called the inner loud and inner light and inner sound practice, but I have updated it to my own liking. So I do meditate, the first part that I do, so there's three parts in my meditation practice. Part number one, I meditate either with the sun, so like basically I do, don't do that if you've never done that, okay, be careful. I do meditate gazing at the sun in a certain way. Okay, and there's several parts in this first part as well. I can't go into details, it would be way too long for that video, but that's the first part I do. Now, if, if the sun isn't available, uh, which is not the case here, but if it happens, I do this um, in another way that again, it would be too long to explain, but basically the first part is connecting with the light, with the source of light, whether it is the sun, whether it is a neon, a light bulb, or whether it is the flame of a candle, find a way to connect first and foremost with the light. Now, when you connect with the light, 
for at least two thirds of, your, of the length of your meditation session, then you can go on and connect with the sound. Now, the sound is, I believe, for more advanced people, the more you meditate, no matter your practice again, at some point, your hearing capacities will grow to the point that, that you are able to hear very subtle sounds that you can't perceive with your human ears, in other words. So that's called, that's the inner sound. That's basically the sound that you have within yourself and that you can connect with any time and anywhere. But you need to be already at a frequency where you can perceive this inner sound, which is why you need to practice with the light first, at least two thirds of the length of your meditation practice. When you are at that frequency where the light has worked on your body, on your cells, on yourself enough, then you can go on with the sound. Now, you don't have to do much apart from focusing your attention on the light first and then focusing your attention on inside of you. And at some point, if you just do that in stillness and silence, no mantra, no gong, 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 no nothing, you will be able at some point, hopefully, to hear this inner sound. Now, in the second part, you just focus on that, uh, on that inner sound. You just put your attention there and be there. And once you do that, so with the light, it's like your frequency goes elevate itself, high, 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 and with the, sun, uh, with the sound, sorry, it goes the opposite. It grounds yourself, so it goes down, down, down. So basically, with that meditation, it goes like, like that. So you grow like upwards, and you grow, shall I say, it's weird to say that, but downwards too. Meaning that you, feel you are balanced. You don't go crazy and, 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 and not anchored or not grounded because the sound is balancing this light energy, this fire energy, and, and grounding you so that you remain a healthy human being. Because there's many, many meditation practices, if you do them, you feel like, totally out of the blue, new age type of thing, like completely out of the ground, basically. You know, you, you don't think normally, you don't, you're not conscious anymore about what's happening around you, which is what can happen big, 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 big times if you do solo practices without grounding yourself, without balancing these solo practices with another type of meditation. Okay, so basically, Again, second part, you just put your attention on this inner sound that you will hear within yourself. And at some point, you will be able to perceive different frequencies like, diff like high and higher and lower vibrations and also different parts of yourself where you hear the sound more. Now, why do I say that? Because on the third part, which is something that, which is the most important one if you, want to want, if you want to be able to go into action through your meditation practice. The third part is now you are visualizing yourself going into action. And for example, at the beginning of my day, I visualize myself doing what I want to do. I visualize myself going hiking or doing a plan for a project or recording a video, talking to someone, going to a specific place. And one at a time, I visualize myself doing this exact thing. I see myself walking on the beach, for example. I see myself writing down my project. And every single time I visualize myself in every single action, the sound through the low, the, you know, whether it's low or high, or through the place I perceive it, will tell me yes or no. It's very, very, very clear. No mistake, no possibility to misunderstand. It's super clear, super tangible, super mathematics. Now, that's why I, would, I wanna say meditation is the most tangible practice I have ever encountered in my life. It's more tangible and concrete with precise results, even better results than what we can imagine or plan. It's more tangible than business. <laughs> it's more tangible than science. It's more tangible than anything I have come in contact with or than workout. Because when you do those things, business, science, workout, all of that, you, don't, you can expect a result, but you're not so sure. But with meditation, you don't expect anything. You simply have to follow what the sound tells you. And you get results that are beyond 
anything you could imagine. That, that is where the miracle comes from. So if we, human beings, we were simply following meditation instead of, follow, of following our mind to take actions, to make decisions, life will really be heaven. Like, like you know, I can't even explain better because really your mind, you don't need to use it. You just need it to use it to, you just need to use it to basically execute. That's it. Like a robot. It feels like being a robot, but I, I see it this way. Meditation is like, or the sound you hear through meditation is like your God's power, your superior intelligence, telling you, sending you the messages that you need at a specific time so that you, with your body and with your mind, can execute the message. Basically, be a servant of God, we could say. That's how we see it. So you become a tool for humanity. You become a tool, well, first for yourself, really, especially if your situation has a few issues. Um, but yeah, that's it. It's so freeing. It's so freeing. Like, yeah, it's so freeing. Because you save so much energy not having to think about anything. You save so much time not having to plan, okay, how I'm going to choose between this and that, I'm going to do that, oh, how about this opportunity, and you just constantly, especially as women, that's a very much of a women trait, it's hard for us to make decisions, most of us, it's hard to, for us to, to decide whether we want this or that, to make things clear, to, to act and do things that we think are okay for us, we, we don't always know what the outcome is going to be, so we're making the right decision or not, Basically, meditation cleans all of that and sets you free. That's why I always say meditation, no matter in which area, will set you free. Will set you free, always. Okay, so that's what I wanted to share. So there's three parts, as I said, in my meditation. Oh, yeah, so maybe in the third part, maybe something important. When So according to... Okay, so if I visualize myself, let's say... Meeting a person, this happens very often actually. Meeting a person, okay, and the sound is telling me no. That's very, very clear again. It's on this side, on that side, you know if it's yes or no. And it says, it's telling me no. I know that I have to, I change my visualization to match until the sound says yes. I know it sounds weird for me to say that. I actually never share that apart from in my programs, in my rejuvenation process, which is a course that I, I, I share online. Um, but apart from there, I've never shared that in so much details, publicly, okay? So thank you, Anitam, for the challenge. All right, so yes, if the sound says no to me wanting to meet someone, I reevaluate and I reshape my observation. So maybe I would visualize myself, not seeing that person that day and seeing that person another day. And now I, I hear what it says. If it says no, okay, I now have to keep changing until it says yes. But really it's not, it doesn't take long because you get used to at some point and you feel in your heart what is right and why it says no. Okay, so maybe a couple of times is the maximum it takes to get the right answer. And if it says yes, then I do it. And that's it. And if I, if I do it, then everything you know, turns out to be fine and aligned and this perfect. Now, if you follow something, because this happened to me, when it says no and you follow, the only thing that will happen is a detour, okay? So instead of going straight, you go through a detour. And in this detour, you experience something that is less healthy and less pleasant. Example, when I was, when I decided to meet a person one day and it said no, but I, I, I kept, you know, following my own plan. I didn't want to follow the sound because I didn't want, at that time, I didn't want to have to say no to the person and explain why I had to say no. Now I feel okay with that. Thank God for the blessing of being able to say no. But back then, I wasn't able to do so. It was really, really hard, really complicated, really challenging. So instead of having to say no to that person, I went anyway and, and to go and see that person. Guess what? During the way to see that person, during the transportation, I took the bus. I was feeling so sick, so bad. I had to stop <laughs> before the, 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 
end of my bus trip to see that person. I had to stop in the middle of the way because I was feeling like I would faint. I was feeling very, very bad. I had to sit, couldn't stand up again, had to sit. Um, fortunately, the sun was in front of me, so I was able to practice with the sun, my meditation. And it took me a few minutes to understand, repent, I would say, because that's what you can do when you go through a detour and not following what your meditation tells you to do. You can always repent, but it does take time to rebalance yourself and to come back to a place where you are at your, you know, healthy again and you feel vibrant again and you feel energized again. Voila, as we say in French, that's it. It's not bad to just not follow, but it, it, it has consequences. So, yeah, I shared my story. I think I shared everything that I wanted. And I'm sharing that so that, yeah, maybe in your New Year's resolution, you can add meditation. Who knows? And if you already meditate, maybe you can add a little bit more. Who knows? I today practice my meditation for eight hours every single day, like seated in silence and stillness. It seems like super long, but honestly, I have so much time today that the time I have, I dedicate for meditation. And the results I have are, are just amazing. I could go on and on and on and on. <laughs> it will take days, months, I don't know. So I, I'm just sharing insights about the beginning and what happened. And uh, so yeah, 2018 was my year of freedom, I would say. Freedom financially, freedom physically, like being able to live anywhere. Uh, freedom emotionally, I no, no longer do emotional eating. I mean, we never know tomorrow, but uh, yeah, freedom with food. I only, today I eat like, uh, sometimes I have fruits, but apart from that, I can go hiking for hours, 20 kilometers with no food and water. And this was possible through meditation. Before I, I was forcing myself to fast, I was forcing myself to, to, to just not eat certain things and it wasn't working because it was coming from a place of being harsh with myself. And today I just allow and I don't expect anything and things just happen. So yeah, being also free, uh, effectively, like not needing to be with a, someone, to be living with a person is freeing. That's my first year, 2018 during which I live finally <laughs> happy alone and to the point that I don't even think about being with people, talking to people, or none of that. People are my friends if I meet them, but I, I no, I'm not living, you know, I'm not having like a boyfriend or, or a potential husband. I don't need that and I'm very happy being a celibate and, and that's my life. Um, you know, we can say you're young, that's why, but the reason is no, I'm happy being a celibate because any experience that I have with meditation is a sexual experience as well. And it's the best experience I could ever have in my life. So I don't need any other experience like that with someone else. Basically, that's, yeah, that's the point and the conclusion of this video. Let's make it the conclusion so that we stop here. So thank you for watching, hearing, you know, being part of this whole monologue. And I hope uh, it gives you tips, maybe inspiration for your own life. And who knows, maybe I'll catch you up later. Bye now.